one of the biggest trends, which I actually love this season, is chocolate and pink together. So what I'm going to do is create a chocolate and pink smoky eye. Um, if you need to, for your uh, pink shade on your eye, you can use a blush that has been tested on um, the eye. Some blushes have, some blushes have not. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply foundation to the forehead and concealer to the eyelids. And then after I paint the eyes, I can go back and clean up anything I've dripped or dropped and have perfect concealer and foundation underneath. Now you'll notice that I'm stippling Chelsea's foundation on. That is a padding motion, as you know, because you've done enough Academy courses that you know that. Um, and that is because I want more coverage just for this area because Chelsea is a broken out girl. No, Chelsea has some skin texture issues right now, just as many of us do and experience periodically. And I want to cover them a little more, but I don't want to use concealer. All right, now I'm going to conceal her eyelids. And then I'm going to powder. Close for me. Just setting concealer and foundation. And you can see how that gave us great coverage on those little bumps. Now, Chelsea has such beautiful brows naturally that I don't need a lot of, of um, color. So I'm going to take my number one brush and do little short feathery hair like strokes in the direction hair grows. I'm just using a matte powder. Um, if you don't have a specific brow powder, you can use any matte eyeshadow that is a shade your brows would be. And this just gives us the slightest bit of definition so that we get a more defined, perfect brow but it does not look drawn on because at Chelsea's age, her generation, chin down just a little, doesn't really want a heavy brow. And hers are naturally so thick and full and beautiful and we don't need it. Now one of the most important things about this look, because we're doing such an intense mid-tone, very pink, and a chocolate accent, which will be almost in a smoky manner that we apply it, you want your highlight to be very subtle. I would say either matte or very little sheen or shine to it. So what I'm going to do is use a very soft, and you know that I like to mix cream and um, powder together for my highlight because I use it like it more intense. In this case, because I know you've been watching the Academy videos, in this case, I'm going to just use powder. So I'm going to take my fleshy, um, my fleshy shimmer uh, eyeshadow and just apply it just to the brow bone. And I'm also going to apply it to the inner part of the lid because I want a little shimmer there so that it, it really kind of cuts down on the smokiness of that brown so that you can wear it for every day. If I didn't do that and did a full on smoky brown it would be more intense. And now highlighting on the inside corner. Just a nice subtle highlight. Now you know I love multiple layers of mascara. And I'm going to start with my first layer after my highlight shade. So I'm going to curl first. Look down for me. If you're not sure about how to curl your eyelashes, you know that it's time to go back and review your eyelash video so that that course can refresh how to curl. Quick synopsis, multiple curls, starting at the base of the lash. If I'm going to use a crimp curler, at first, I must do it before mascara. Then I'm going to take my detailed eyelash curler and just do the corners to get that really great curl. Because what do we do with our eyelashes? We curl, curl, curl. Now I'm going to do my first layer of mascara. Look down for me. Remember, waterproof because that helps keep the curl. Just a nice thin layer because remember I like multiple coats. Shop! How many layers Chelsea? 
Multiple. Three. Three, very good. <laughs> She's done this before. Do you always put the mascara on after the highlight? I do do my first layer of mascara after the highlight because it gives it time for it to dry. And one of the things about layering mascara is each layer has to dry in between. And so it helps mm -hmm. give me more time for each layer to dry because it could take up to two minutes. Okay. And if you were doing your, mas your makeup yourself, you're going to be doing it much faster than me because you're not teaching. And because of that, you need as much time as possible for it to dry. So if you do it then, by the time you put your highlight, on, your mid-tone on, it's had time to dry. Okay. And if nice. <clears throat> your highlight shade fell on your lashes, it could cause kind of opposite what we want. It would lighten. So we wait till after the highlight for the first layer. Okay. If a little mid-tone falls on a little accent, it's not going to lighten your lashes mm -hmm. the way a highlight would. Okay. Okay, now, I'm going to apply my mid-tone with number 27 brush. So I'm going to take a pink mid-tone. Remember what I said earlier, it could be a blush as long as it's a blush that's tested for the eye. Because many times your blush will be a little more intense pink than most mid-tones. Okay, so looking down, starting at the base of the lashes, I'm just going to brush all the way across the lid up into the crease. And it doesn't need to be super intense like drag queen pink, but it's definitely pink. Actually, to give you an idea of how pink it is, let me just show you on my finger, it's quite pink. See how pink it is? Now, a normal mid-tone that has a pink hue to it is actually more of a brown pink. I know compared to this pink, that doesn't look pink, but that is a pink undertoned mid-tone. So it's quite pink. Just to give you an idea as to how pink it is, starting at the base of the lash line, working it all the way across the lid, up into the crease. You can start to see why me highlighting the inside corner is important on this look because it keeps it slightly fresher, which is so important. We want a little bit of freshness to it because it's a daytime look, even though it's a more dramatic application. Now remember, the trick to your eyeshadow not looking muddy is the number 28 brush stays always clean to go back and blend out what you've added. But as you can see, it's pink, but it's not scary crazy pink. And I really think that many of you in creating this look for fall are going to, instead of investing in a new mid-tone that's more intense pink, just choose one of your pink blushes. Because nowadays, most blushes have been tested for the eye. All right, now we're going to add our contour color. I'm going to start out with a matte brown and then I'm going to go over it with a bit of a shimmer. On the runways it was a very high shimmer on the on your contour shade. I think for every day with this look because it's so dramatic the pink is so bright if we do matte first and then layer a little bit of shimmer brown on top of it you'll be much better off. I'm going to start with a matte brown once again it's my number 27 because I'm doing it a bit smoky. Starting at the base of the lash line I'm going to start to work it across the lash line. Remember, little bits at a time. It's much easier to add more color than it is to remove it. Working it across. The give in the brush makes it perfect for doing a blended smoky look. So you're going across the whole eyelid with the accent? Uh-huh. Starting at the outside, because the first place you touch gets the most color, and then blending okay. it towards the center. This way. In order to make this look look the way it should and dramatic enough for the look to be true to itself but subtle enough for daytime, I am going to line with a dark brown eyeliner right at the base of the lash line. Now I'm doing it after my matte and before my shimmer. That is so that I can go over it with my shimmer. when I'm blending it out. This way. Using a nice deep brown. Now also I'm going to do my trick 
of pushing color into the lash line so we get the drama that we want right at the base of the lash line. So I'm going to take my number 41 brush, some black eyeshadow, turn it down for me, and I'm pushing it right into the base of the lash line. This makes your lashes look really thick and makes sure I get color right up into the lashes. And I'm going to take my number 40 brush and I'm going to start applying some brown on top of that liner to help set it and help me when I start to blend it out. So I'm laying it on there and just slightly pulling up. And you can see how that already starts to blend out that liner. Now I'm going to take my 27 brush again. I'm going to take a shimmery brown, starting at the base of the lashes and working it all over it. By doing the matte first, it really grounds the shimmery brown, so we get the drama we want, but at the same time, it makes it more wearable for day. So applying the color with 27, blending out with 28. Are you blending the eyeliner with this at the same time? Yeah, I'm going over the line on the eyeliner as well. By going over it first with the number 40, that started the blend, and then it just finishes the blend. Now, one thing you'll notice, even though I'm doing smoky, the fact that I highlighted here first with just a little bit of powder, softens the whole smokiness. If I had not done that, when I put all this brown on, it would be the same intensity all the way across. But because I had that highlight there first, it makes that area just a slight bit softer. So it makes it more wearable. So have it nice and blended, and you can see how you can still see that pink with now the chocolate lid, which gives us that chocolate and pink look. Before I clean up underneath your eyes, I am going to do another layer of mascara because you know me, I like lots of layers. Multiple, multiple. Oops, I grabbed the wrong formula. It was all your fault, Chelsea. My beauty is distracting. <laughs> your beauty is distracting. I love that one. Okay. Down. Doing my second layer, so now it'll have plenty of time to dry before my third. Never worry if you get mascara anywhere on the face. If you let it dry, it will then just flake right off for you. If I immediately went after it where I got it on your face, it would smear and stain and wouldn't be able to get it off. But by leaving it alone and letting it dry, you don't have plenty of time to dry so it doesn't stick to the skin and it'll flake right off. Going back over the lashes with my comb. Now, one of the things I am going to do before my last layer of mascara is I'm going to use the heated eyelash curler because she has little lashes that haven't wanted to stay curled. And what am I obsessed with? Curled eyelashes. Very good. You've passed your test. Okay, now I'm going to clean up all that I dripped. First with just a dry sponge. Then, because not only does it help me moisturize the area underneath the eye, get an extra layer of moisture, but also so that I can clean off what it has been dripped, I'm going to take a little eye cream and go over that area. That will clean off everything I've dripped, as well as cleaning it off. Look up and moisturizing it. You're kind of cute. Getting there. Yeah. Now I'm just gonna flake off those little spots of mascara. And they'll flake right off for me. The eyeshadow? Mm -mm. But just to make you feel better. <laughs> you happy now? Yep. <laughs> okay. Now, we're going to conceal underneath the eye. 
you don't have any definite dark circles. If she had like severe, definite, defined dark circles, then I might um, need a more precise, precise, <laughs> precise application. Because she does not, I can use a sponge. Because remember, when we conceal, we must color within the lines. Also for fun, with this look on every one runway that did it, they did a false lash. Now, because we're going to do a bright flushed pink cheek, and we're going to be apple popping, which we'll talk about again later, but in order to prepare for it and give me even better definition, I'm going to go ahead and use a slightly darker foundation, and I'm going to apply it right along her cheekbone, and then I'm going to blend it out. This is going to contour her face a little bit, but more importantly, it's going to be able to ground that pink, and when I apple pop, it'll just make that apple popping more intense. Now the other side, I'm dabbing a little bit right along the cheekbone, blending it out. Okay. Okay, look up for me, blending that out. I'm using my detailed number 76 brush to get just the right amount of powder underneath the eye. Blending it out. Now, I'm gonna take, oh, it's in my hand, sorry. My number 13 brush. And I'm first, remember, because I like to gradate my color underneath the eye so I don't have dark against pale. Look up. I'm going to take my mid-tone, which is my pink, apply it underneath the eye first, starting from the outside going in because the first place we lay our brush gets the most color. Look up. Creating that chocolate and pink look that's so hot. It was, it was actually the most seen look on runways this fall. I'm going to go ahead and just use the shimmery brown because I'm just going to add the slightest bit underneath the eye on top I did matte first but underneath I just need the shimmer because I actually do want it to be a bit more sheer. Now I'm going to take my number 14 brush and I'm going to take that same shimmery highlight. Look up for me and apply it on the inside corner of the eye. Once again, that softens the kind of smoky effect that this look has. So it's more wearable for day. And I'm also going to take my clean brush. This time I'll use a smaller clean brush. Just my number 30. Look up for me. And kind of blend out to enhance that kind of smoky feel. And the reason why I took such a big one is because there's no color on it. And it will help really soften that so there's no line. It just gives you smoky color. I'm going to do mascara along the bottom lash line. Notice once again I got some color there I didn't want. I'm going to let it dry. Do you do more than one layer on the bottom too? No, I only do one layer on the bottom. Okay. I don't really do extremely intense underneath lashes. Look up for me. I'm a child of the 90s. Actually, when I, well, I'm a child of the 80s, but when I first started doing makeup, it was more in the 90s. And at that time, you used no mascara along the bottom lash line. Okay. So even though I like mascara along the bottom lash line now, I like it to be more subtle than along the top lash line. Also, I always prefer all my color to be darker on top than on bottom because it lifts the eye up. So no matter what I'm doing, I always make sure that my eyeshadow, my eyeliner, my everything is more intense on the top, slightly than the bottom. That way it visually lifts the eye. 
That's why you'll notice in a lot of my looks, look up, whenever I'm really working on someone, if you look at before and after, mm -hmm. it looks like I've kind of given their face a lift. It's because of that. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. Okay. Now we're going to do cheeks. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bronze. So using a nice matte, matte, matte bronzer. Because anytime you add texture to the skin, or shimmer to the skin, it will show textural flaws. So I always prefer my bronzers to be matte on ivory beige skin. So I'm going to start at the back, come down, and blending up and out. Just giving a nice, beautiful glow to the face. Honey bit on the neck, just because I can. Actually, your neck's a little lighter than your body. And so why? Because you're good. You can keep your face out of the sun. And so by doing a tiny bit of bronzer, on the neck, it will even out your neck with your body. The trick that I have to do, a little bronzer to contour the nose. Now I'm gonna take my number 73 brush again. Now remember, I've said 73 twice. 73 for cheeks, 73 for face, you'll need two brushes. Always keeping one for cheeks, one for face. I'm gonna take my pink blush, smile for me, and I'm going to pop it on the apples of the cheek to give me that pink glow I want. But by doing bronzer first, it gave me the depth I needed to kind of ground the look. And then popping the apples with pink, it will give me that pink look that's in, in trend and on trend. If I had just used pink alone, it would be too bright, too obnoxious, not natural for real life. So can you use... So? the same um, pink blush as you had said earlier, you could use blush on your eyes. Yes, if you've used blush on your eyes, you would want to use the same pink blush on your cheeks okay. because the idea is for it to be a bit, a bit monochromatic. Smile from again. So yeah, completely. Okay. Once again now, the blush must be tested for the eye. Okay, now I'm going to add a false lash. I'm going to take kind of a spidery natural lash. It's, they're kind of spiky, which I think are kind of fun for right now. First thing I'm going to do, look down for me, is I'm going to lay it across the eye to see how wide I want it to be. Look up. Because one thing you need to look down, you need to keep in mind with false lashes, that's too wide for most eyes, so I need to trim it. And by measuring Chelsea's eye, I see that I need to trim two clumps from the outer corner off. Now, if you've watched the, la the false lash video, you know that this is a trick I always do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a um, liquid eyeliner, and I'm going to go over the band and darken the band, so when I put it on, it will look more natural. So I'm just going to take it on my liquid eyeliner brush and I'm just going to cover and color that lash band. We're going to take our glue go right along that lash band just a nice thin layer then we're going to do what I call rolling the lash while it dries and I'm going to basically just roll to round it out more while it starts to dry. By giving the glue a chance to start to dry, it will be stickier and tackier. Okay, look down. And then we're going to simply lay it right over the liner that we put on earlier. And then push it in with our tweezer. Just remember, the further to the outer corner you put this lash on, the more natural it will feel while it's on after the glue dries. So don't go in too far with the lash. So how would you be able to tell how far in you should go? Um, I would say if you're a beginner, look straight ahead. Never 
start your lash any closer than that edge of your iris. Since I'm not a beginner, I went just in slightly. Never go in more than like an eighth of, a, of an inch from the edge of your iris. Okay. I would say always leave half inch okay. on the inside corner if you're scared of it being comfortable or not. Mm -hmm. But in that case, you need to make sure you use a lash that's not too dramatic. Because if you did a really thick, dramatic lash and you started in that far, yeah. you'd see where it started. Oh, okay. Look down. And you're going to apply it right to where we lined earlier. Because I want this look to be more wearable, because she's youthful, let's face it, Chelsea probably won't always want to wear lip liner. She's got great lips. I actually wear lip liner most times. Mm -hmm. But for this look, I want it to be very sheer. I'm going to take one of my favorite pink lip, lip glosses. <laughs> one of my favorite pink lip glosses. And I'm just going to do a sheer coat on her lips to give that, that hint of pink. Because once again, part of this look for fall, this pink chocolate look, is a very monochromatic pink. So you want your pink on your eye, your cheek, and your lips to be a similar hue. Just remember, if you feel like pink is too strong for you, but you want to wear something very similar to this, just choose a sheerer pink, a sheerer blush, a sheerer eyeshadow, and a sheerer gloss. Also, a trick that I don't think most people know is if you apply lip gloss with a brush, it will appear shinier than if you apply it with a doe foot. The doe foot is the applicator that most glosses come with. I didn't apply it directly with that because it's not as shiny as me applying it with a brush. Okay. So a brush will make it look shinier. My last step, I'm going to take one more coat of mascara and simply do a light coat blending Chelsea's lashes into the false lashes. And by doing that, it makes it look even more natural. So this is a wearable version of my favorite fall look, which is pink and chocolate together. A slightly smoky chocolate eye with pink undertones. I usually do a classic eye. Um, I don't do a lot of colors or the smoky eye is what I'm very excited about because I've never had the guts to try it. I didn't know how to do it and now that Robert showed me how to do a cute, fun, smoky eye, I'm going to use it all the time.